Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at maximum. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You're wasting your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Amy. Morning, all. We have Stuart. Zombie brains. And we have Eugene. No, that would be the people. We could try calling him. <laughs> and we have Eugene. Hello. This week we are celebrating episode number 100. That's right, we have managed to successfully do 100 of these damn things. How? Oh, Nobody really knows! Well, we've probably done about 103 at this point, but this is the 100th weekly episode that we have done live. Um, yeah. I think we've got three specials, so this would technically be 103, but the specials don't count. Um, so, yeah, so as some of you know, we're, as of the end of this episode, we're going to re- be reformatting it a bit, so we're going to be taking a little bit of a hiatus. Um, we're hoping to have it back in a couple of weeks. Um, maybe sooner, maybe longer, depends on how we go about organizing segments and that sort of thing. Um, it's no longer going to be a live show like this one, so there'll be no more sort of interaction with the the chat or anything like that, not that we've had that in a while. Um, we miss you, chat. Chatty, come back. Anyway, um... <laughs> I'm horrible. So horrible. Um, anyway, so yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing. But this week, as the finale, we thought we'd kick it off with a bit of fun and cover 50 years of Star Trek, specifically our thoughts on Star Trek and all that sort of stuff. So um, I figure we'll kick it off with Stuart. What was your first reaction when you first watched Star Trek? Or what was your first exposure, I should say, to Star Trek? Uh, I actually can't remember the first time I watched Star Trek. <laughs> wow. So, Wasn't that memorable? Uh, I know it was, it was Next Gen was the first time I ever watched anything Star Trek related. So, I think the only reason why I watched Next Gen is because I wanted to watch more of Patrick Stewart after seeing him as Professor Charles Xavier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a horrible, horrible person. I know. But I, I could drop that in horribleness. Just pure unre- unindulgent horribleness. My first exposure to Star Trek in a proper manner was the 2009 Star Trek movie. Oh. I then went and watched Enterprise and then oh the original series, then Next Gen, then Voyager, and I'm about a season and a half in a Deep Space Nine. Something like that? I kind of burnt out around then. I was like, yep, no, done with Star Trek. That's all I can have. I've had all I can handle. <laughs> I need to take a break. So I'm in the process of rewatching Stargate again. I guess an argument could be made that Stargate was my first exposure to Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, they constantly take the piss out of Star Trek and Stargate. So. I actually had a friend at work tell me the other day when I was like, Oh yeah, he's from Stargate, and um, it's like, there's, uh, there's the only person going to Oz Comic Con is um, Carl Urban from the new Star Trek movie. And he goes, isn't that the same thing? What's the same thing? Star Trek and Stargate. <laughs> no. N- oh, no. God, I was in here. <laughs> N- no. <laughs> That's like, wow. EJ would, ra- would rage like a mofo if he heard that. Oh yeah. So, what about you, Eugene? What was your research version? Oh, well. Being all you kids, um, I actually watched the original track. Uh, well, the original track came out around the time I was born, so I, wa- I know I watched it a number of years later, but that was my first exposure to it. Okay. The original, um, the original Trek did cover a lot of sort of landmark stuff. The, there's so many things that Trek did early, like um, first interracial kiss between Kirk and Uhura. Um, 
sort of, yeah. There's so many things. My brain just went total mental blank then. Stuart, do the thing. What thing am I doing? I don't know. Just... <laughs> You're meant to know. That's the whole point of having you here. He went mental blank. <laughs> I went mental blank. And I'm trying to... All the different things that Star Trek did first. You've got the, the, oh, okay. the pads. Um, you've got mobile phones. You've got all this different stuff that was in Star Trek pages. first. Um, so I mean stuff that we actually have. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't think faces are that far off, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Um, Fair point. Medical tools? Nah, we've had medical tools for thousands of years and we don't really have much in the way of... Like, the stuff we have today was fairly... Well, it's been more advanced than the stuff in the 60s. It's, we still had access to quite a bit of it. Um, well, the late 60s, access anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, but so... Oh, let's shift gears. Did you guys see this? Yep, go. Did you guys did you guys see they're coming out with the next generation communicator that will tie into your cell phones? Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so, That'd be worse than the new people trying to uh, people trying to rename Vivians. Oh. oh. That's just Dweeks. No, Seriously, do you want us to be called Dweeks? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> if, we're, if we're a Hoovian, we're a Hoovian. If we're a Trekkie, we're a Trekkie. Well, technically it's Trekker, but same shit, different bucket. The question is, there's no real sort of... Name you've... for Star Wars fans. No, no. don't have anything. No, no, I was going to say, there's no real name for the Stargate fans. Gators? I guess? <laughs> that sounds really weird, though. Like, does it sound Star right? Stargators across the universe. No. Wait, no, that's not how that goes. That's Star Trekkers. And out the airlock. <laughs> Stuart deserved that. It's, it's, we have to, with the, in the 100th episode, have to throw him out the airlock at least once. Uh, Come on, he was doing Stargate for Star Trek. Yeah, exactly. He deserved to be thrown out the airlock. <laughs> I had to do it one last time. <laughs> uh, so yeah. yeah, there is no really Stargate song. Um, Stargate name. Song. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's... it's the same as Star Wars fans. We don't really have a name for our fandom either. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, everyone, every single one of my friends just wants to be a Sith. <laughs> all, all my cosplay fans is like, if I ever cosplay, I'm going to be a Sith. It's like, oh god, why? <laughs> it's because they think yeah, they... that it's cool. They don't actually understand the concept of the Sith. So, um, oh. Force lightning is a cool power. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. You forget. You can charge your phone in like two seconds. Regardless <laughs> of where you are. Being, being a bad boy is a good thing. Yeah. Or a bad thing. Can you imagine, just on the note of Sith, Emperor Palpatine versus Iron Man? Squished Iron Man. <laughs> no, no, I see Palpy just force lightning him and. Iron Man just being like, huh, cool, more power, take that. Well, doesn't, it's an inverse throw, and doesn't the lightning, like, drain him? No, no, the lightning supercharges him, gives him, because power reserves at 400%. No, no, no. When oh, he, no, no, yeah, no, it does charge him as well, yeah. Yeah, when he was fighting... Oh, uh, this is funny, it just makes him angrier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, how about Iron Man versus um, Magneto? Magneto? That's <laughs> happened in the comic books a couple of times, specifically in X-Men versus... Avengers, um, probably one of my favourite comic book lines. Squished, uh, squished Iron Man. No, he made his suit out of carbon oh. fibre when he took on Magneto, and Magneto's like, ha ha, oh shit, that does nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, anyway, um, okay, how about this? Favourite Star Trek villain? Eugene, go. I think I'm going to go with the Dominion. Um, um, probably, probably the female changeling. Yep. 
Yeah, shield's pretty cool. Let's do it, go. Uh, has to be, for me, has to be the Borg. Nice. The Borg. Uh, just, just mainly of, like, when they actually, um, assimilate Jean-Luc, uh, Captain Picard, because that's still terrifies me. Oh, yeah. Now, for me, it has to be Todd the Wraith. Uh, no. No? I, Stargate. Okay, the System Lord Anubis. <laughs> Isn't that still Stargate? That's the joke. That's the point. Report to the airlock, please. Report to the airlock. Oh, look, a cake. Whee! <laughs> wait, wait. You know would be the perfect thing for that? Ooh, a piece of candy. You know, Ooh, a piece of candy. 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 Ah! <laughs> Whee! Ooh, a piece of candy. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, no, nah, oh, back to a relatively serious note. Um, I don't actually know... Serious? What's well, serious? The... Sorry, serious isn't here today. <laughs> serious black. Um, anyway. Wow, Harry Potter joke. Not the point. <laughs> um, probably my favourite bad guy would have to be, and I can't, for the life of me, I can't think of his name. I was actually buying time while I was trying to think of what it was. Um, is the Romulan from the original series that takes on Kirk in the cloak ship. That's still one of my favorite episodes. Um, he never, I don't think he ever had an actual name, but it was played by Mark Leonard in Balance of Terror. Yeah, that's the one. Um, that, to me, was one of my sort of... Because I'm all about sort of the strategy sort of side of things, and that was done really well. Um, yeah, that would be my favorite villain. Okay, favorite captain. Stuart, go. Uh... Card. <laughs> I, it's it's because I love. I just I it's because I got to enter next gen because of Patrick Stewart. So yeah, well, that was a fairly easy answer. Um, Eugene. I think I'm gonna go with Archer. Archer, yeah, Archer was good. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm going to have to go with um, a captain, my captain, who, from um, Star Trek Horizons, the fan film, he was my favourite. And I'm a horrible human being for getting what his name is. I'm the worst. <laughs> I really am. Uh, me and names, they just don't, they just don't work. Not, not on Tuesday mornings, anyway. Yeah. Well, it's the first day of my holiday, because I've got all the next weekend off. So, hashtag Oz Comic Con. Well, Holiday was holidays. Yeah. Um, well, you've got to be doing something in order to earn a holiday, Amy. I'm studying. Uh huh. Um. Anyway. Oh. Okay. We've done the bad guy. We've done our favorite captain. Favorite ship. Um. I'll I'll start off. Light saucer. Oh. Okay. So. Amy has chosen the front half of the Galaxy Class Enterprise. <laughs> well, it is a flying saucer. <laughs> All we need now is to put a cup on it. Yep. Um, wow. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> so you, what, you disagree? <laughs> nope, you just broke me, that's all. Um, mine would have to be... There's a, Okay, I'm, I'm going to lean heavily on the fan side of things because I... I I know more about the fan side of things. Um, if I had to choose a cannon ship, it would be the Sovereign Class Enterprise. The um, Because that, to me, is just a really nice looking ship. If I get my allowed fan ships, I'm going to have to go with the Phoenix Class. Um, the, in, the fan, in the fan timeline, the Phoenix Class comes after the Enterprise E. Um, it's slightly larger, but it's of similar design. It's sort of halfway between a Voyager sort of feel and an Enterprise E sort of feel, and that is probably my favourite design ship, even though it's a fan ship. Um, so, Stuart, go. Um, so I'm not actually going to go, like, a main ship. I'm going to go the Delta Flyer. Delta Flyer? Nice. The, the, Del- the Delta Shuttle, basically. Yeah. The only two is an because it can go warp 10 and turn you into a lizard. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm being a lizard. Uh, so, Eugene, favorite ship, go. 
Um, for the fan films, my favorite ship is the Ares class from yeah. Axanar. Yes, I'll agree but with that. For, it's it is quite a nice looking ship. For, but for canon ships, um, I have two favorites, and both are kit bashes that only appear once. From the best of both worlds, I I like the Cheyenne class, which was the one that had the four warp nacelles. And from Deep Space Nine, the one I liked was the USS Centaur, which uh, harassed Cisco and company when they ha were in the uh, Jem'Hadar ship. Because they were different types of ships other than the standard stuff we were used to seeing. Nice. Uh, um, okay, let's see. Cover the chips, cover the captains, cover the bad guy. Okay, let's go. Favorite moment in Star Trek. Um, Besides the iconic ones? Yeah. Like, beam me up, Scotty? Never actually happened in the series. Amy to the airlock. Amy to the airlock. I, I've never said I've... She's I never seen it. She's allowed to be wrong about one little thing. That and if we tried to put her in the airlock, she'd turn into one of those feral cats and just slice and claw until there's nothing left. Or the airlock. <laughs> Both. People trying to put you in the airlock and the airlock prop up. <laughs> so... That's why it's, that's why it's Scarecrow's job to guide you to the airlock because you don't you never suspect him as the one that's going to throw you out. And he's never on. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. Favorite moment. See that to me is a slightly harder one. I would have to go with. Uh, first contact ramming. Sp um, today, perhaps today is a good day to die. Ramming speed! And he turns to the fight and goes to ram it. And he's like, we've got another ship coming in! It's the Enterprise! And so, so, oh, yeah. Sweet, cool, we don't get to die. Damn. Fucking Klingons <laughs> in their will to die. Alright. <laughs> um... Okay, Stuart, go. Oh, fool. This is actually really hard. Um, hmm. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to the movies for this one. Yep. It's one of the only things I actually enjoyed in Star Trek Into Darkness is when they did the flip. On um on 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 with um Kirk dying instead of Spock. Ooh. I know, I know. A lot of people didn't like it, but oh, I thought it was a yeah. really nice little oh. mirror flip. So I'm going to get airlocked, aren't I? I'll I'll leave that one up to Eugene. Huh? I'll leave that one up to Eugene. Whether you deserve to be airlocked or not. the airlock. to the airlock. Yep, there we go. There he goes. The airlock, he's been thrown out the airlock again. Um, so, Eugene, what's your favourite moment? I think I'll go with... Uh, um, Star Trek IV had a couple real good comical moments. So, uh... Don't tell me you're from space. No, I'm from Iowa. I just worked there. Yeah. Well, it's like someone, um, it's, it's referenced again in Stargate where um, they someone looks at Teal and goes, Are you a Jafar? And O'Neill goes, No, but he plays one on TV. It's like, wow. <laughs> not lying 
Yeah. Okay. Favorite Star uh, Star Trek spoof. Whether it be the series tech making fun of itself, or an external source making fun of Star Trek. Go. Whoever. I've never seen any spoofs. I'm going with the Flintstones parody that's online. And I think it's uh, uh, Stone Trek. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. It's hysterical because they even go as far as having a little counter as to how many red shirts are killed during the episode. <laughs> That'd be lots. That's pretty funny. Um, let's see. There's so many choices you got. There's the one from Futurama where the nerdy cloud um, kidnaps all the heads. Of the, the Star Trek characters and makes. Why would they want to rescue them back? And then they have to go and get them. Um, but I'd have to go with episode two hundred from Stargate SG One, where the 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 singularity is about to explode. Weapons are at maximum. One, that's Star Trek. Two, that's ridiculous. The singularity is about to explode. Yes, that'd have to be my probably my number one favorite Star Trek sort of spoof. But there's so many Star Trek spoofs, it's so hard to choose. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I guess I have really never really noticed the spoofs. Yeah. There are a ton, I've just never really noticed them. Oh, there is kajillions of Star Trek spoofs. There's probably more Star Trek spoofs than there is Star Trek, period. That wouldn't be hard. No. Well, there's quite a lot of Star Trek. After all, it's yeah. been around for 50 fucking years. Yeah. <laughs> Not like it's the new kid on the block. Credit where credit's due, it's just done really, really well. Um, okay, now... Okay. This may not apply to you guys, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Favourite Star Trek game? Monopoly? Oh, I've actually played a couple of these. Oh, here we go. Let's do it. Oh, 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 what is that one? It was on PC and it was like a, um, it was like Star Trek, but it was like Age of Empires style. No? Uh, well, not Age of Empires, but, but it was basically you had, you had a whole bunch of ships and you, and it was a turn based game. A turn based Star Trek game? Yeah, it was really. Let's see if I can, see if I can find it. Yeah, you look it up. I know what mine is. My one is. Star Trek Legacy, the game that was on Xbox 360, PS3, and PC, where you command, um, you, you command the ship, you actually fly it in relatively 3D flight. You can't loop the loop, but you can sort of still fly around 3D, like target specific ships or specific systems on those ships if you want to. Um, it was a really fun game. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Eugene, have you played any Star Trek games? Um, I have the old NES NES uh, game on for Star Trek. Nice. Uh huh. And I have an old Nintendo system to play it on that still works. Even better. Um, Those are hard to come by. Also, uh, also um, one of the Star Trek games that's pretty fun is one that I mentioned a long time ago on a podcast, the Red Shirts parody game, which. You basically send your crew out on missions and then make them die. <laughs> uh, so see how many red shirts you can kill. Pretty much. Yep. That That's the object of the game. Why not? Um, so have you found that game yet, Stuart? No, uh, found it up while I played that if we're going about Star Trek Armada. Yeah, Amato was pretty good. So was Bridge Commander. But sort of the... I think the best one of those that I played was... Um, Legacy. Even though it had some pretty serious limitations. I'd love to see a new Legacy game brought out. Sort of... But over a... Sort of a broader scale. I know that's kind of what Star Trek Online is. But at the same time, it's Star Trek Online. And I didn't really like that. Yeah... Have you found it yet? I can't remember. No, no, I honestly can't remember what it is. Just Google turn-based Star Trek game and see what comes up. Uh, 
Okay, so. Birth of the Federation? Yeah, there it is. F 1999. Yeah, it was old, but I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look that up. It got some fairly craptastic okay. reviews. Eh, I like a lot of shitty games. <laughs> I've noticed. Um, okay. I wonder if there's some videos of that. Um... Eugene, have you heard anything about uh, any news that came out of Axanar recently? Um, they put out two new trailers. They they look really nice. Mm hmm Okay. Oh, wow. I'm looking at some video of Birth of the Federation. <laughs> what the actual fuck? <laughs> Remember, this was the 90s, so... I know. Oh, I am so glad that there's a Star Trek mod for Star Wars Empire at War. So much better. <laughs> Such a better game. <sighs> then again, you think of the major tech upgrade we did done what 10 years oh i know it did in the last oh, last 20 years oh, anyway, in the last 50... here's the thing here's a really crazy thing it's only been 25 years since 8-bit gaming yeah no no here's the crazy thing it's only been 10 years since star wars empire war came out and look at the difference between that and now i know it's crazy oh. i think where we'll be in another 10 years I'd rather I don't not. Know where, I don't even know where we'll be in another ten years. That's the thing. I'll be almost. Oh. I'll be almost forty. I don't want to think about another ten years. <laughs> I would be. 40. Still, 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 okay. still, still, have five kids by then. Two, two. Well, you need five. You got Luke. You got Leia. You've got Han. You've got Chewie uh, and uh, Kylo. No. <laughs> no, it's Ben. Get it right. <laughs> 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 then I can yell. Then I can yell at him and be like, "Bad!" <laughs> and I can buy him. I can buy him red lightsabers and teach him the dark side. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but think of the cost of feeding all those children. That's not my problem. I just turn up every now and again, load them up on sugar, laugh maniacally, and drive away. <laughs> Whoa, oh, this is big for Australian tech people. Okay, here we go. JB Hi-Fi has just bought out the good guys. Really? Okay, that's not going to be good. There was rumours that yeah. they were going to do it last week, but... Yeah, JB wow. Hi-Fi would pay $870 million in good guys takeover. Wow. Whoa, okay. Yeah, I, I don't like that. No. They're buying it. I know, I get the whole point of buying out competitors, but no, it's it's less that. It's more. I see whale sight and sound all over again. Yeah. It's the market is on too much of a free fall at the moment in Australia to be buying out competitors for that much money. Anyway, um, let's shift gears really quickly. Oz Comic Con is coming up this week. Who? <laughs> So we have got media accreditation. So hopefully we'll find out tomorrow, later today or and early I'm be tomorrow. Monitoring all weekend. So. Yep. If we get interviews, so and if we get interviews, yeah. we'll let you guys know. Um, Stuart's going to be volunteering and looking after the tabletop gaming area. So if you console are a and tabletop. console and tabletop gaming area. So if you want to go torment somebody, go over there and make all of as much annoyance as you possibly can. Um, and then when Stuart and will, tries... And I will shower you when the dank memes. Yeah. Praise be to Harambe. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm not yeah. joking. On the volunteer page, this photo came up of a guy in a cosplay, and all he had was a Harambe picture in a frame over his chest, and it's all the volunteers just bowing down to it. 
Wow. <laughs> Friggin' idol worship. Anyway. <laughs> so wrong. So, so wrong. So, so, do we know what's happening in the console area this time? Or is it just going to be oh, random games like last things. time? Um, I know a couple things. Okay, what do you know? Uh, I, uh, I know what Sydney had, but so I'm guessing we'll have similar to what Sydney had, but... Yep, what Sydney had? Uh, I believe... Uh, so Sydney had a Super Smash uh, setup. Nice. Super Smash Brothers area setup. They had a uh, Jacktop Party Pack setup, which is like Quiplash. Yeah. It's like really funny stuff. Um, they had a jousting area. What? <laughs> it, it's like this. It's this indie game. It's like really big, apparently. So. Uh, I'm sorry. I just pictured people in cosplay holding <laughs> sticks and running at each other and falling down on the ground. Just I'm, yeah. Just what the hell? Anyway, moving right along. And I also I don't know if we'll get up here, but I know Sydney had a HTC Vive. VR setup as well, so... Nice. Do you know I if we... we got that. It's... Rumor has it, um... Someone's going to be paying a visit to the Marvel area. That's probably a pile of crap, but... I heard that they might be, um... Sneaking someone in. Marvel area? As far as I know, we don't have a Marvel area. We don't? I thought, I thought we had a Marvel area for Brisbane as well as Sydney. Uh, it's not on the website. Oh, okay. Well, if it's not on the website, then it doesn't exist. Um... What I heard was wrong. Yeah, no, there's no Marvel. It's only a Sydney thing. Okay. Well, screw you, Marvel. You're not good enough for me. Don't... Um, so, yeah. so, there is quite a few people going to Oz Comic Con, celebrity-wise. Um, I've picked out my list, and I've checked it twice. And, and then realised that I really don't have anywhere near enough money. It's not even remotely fucking close to enough money. I was um, looking at my list and going, that's five people and it's like nearly $400. Yeah, I'm looking at my list going, that's four people and that's $600. Because I factor in parking and all that other stuff as well, so. Like food and stuff. Okay, so. Right. Let's see. We've got. Um, a few people have cancelled since we last covered who's going to Oz Comic Con. Let's do a quick run down the list again. We've got Charlie Carver and Max Carver, who are both from... I have no fucking idea. Aaron Ashmore, who is from X-Men. Maggie Roswell. No, no, that's, he's not from X-Men, that's Bob... That's Sean. That's Sean? Sean was Bobby in X-Men. Aaron's from, um, Killjoys. Oh, god damn and it. And also Lost Girl. Okay, and, so... And Lost Girl, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well then, I've got the twins the wrong way round. They look the fucking same. Don't blame me. They're, tw they're twins. Um, Maggie Roswell, who is from... Not a fucking clue. Uh, then... She's a voice actor. Okay, sweet. She's played, um, uh, Maud Flanders and, and, oh. uh, Helen Lovejoy, like... So, yeah. Note to self. How much are her signatures? Uh, 20. 20 bucks. Ooh, very... Very, very tempting. Um... Because I've got a Simpsons Collector's Edition out there that I'd probably get a design. Um, Daniel Portman. No Game idea. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Excellent. Yep. Patrick uh, Payne. Uh, Keisha Castle Hughes. Also Game of Thrones. Nice. If they're Game of Thrones people, I might have to add them on my list. Oh, they're just minor she was also, Game of She was people. also in Star Wars Episode Three as well. She was. I think she might be like a. I think she might be like Queen of the Boo at the time, like the back character she played. Oh, okay. Hmm. Maybe it I'll... doesn't say what characters was. Well, just mentions that she was in there. So. Okay. Um. I can't say the next name. You do it. <laughs> Kesnia Solo. That's it. Kinsey. Um. From Let's Go. Lost Girl. Yeah. Rachel Minor. I'm assuming also Lost Girl. Um. I I'm, think so. I have no idea. Uh, Rachel is. Let me get her up. Uh, the she she was um she was uh supernatural. 
She was, well, she was a kick-ass demon on Supernatural. Ah. Okay. Charles Martinet. <laughs> Mario. It's a me, Mario. Dude, um, like that is so cool. Um. Oh yeah, that's gonna be great. He's also well. Okay, this is who he's done. He's he's also he's Mario, but he's also voiced Baby Mario, Luigi, Baby Luigi, Wario, and Waluigi. Like, literally, he's almost everyone. Nice. Every so male saving, person. So Very nice. Saving money. <laughs> yeah. I just want to go to him and be like, wah, wah. Yeah, you do that, he will slap you. Um, and... Oh, we will. And I want to see him do it. I want to be there before you so I could say to him, it's okay, you can slap him, you have my permission. Um, now, the next couple of guys I don't know from anything. Mitch... (laughs) (laughs) Oh! The next two guys are awesome. Oh, I know, right? (laughs) Um... You got Mitch Pelegi, who is Skinner. Who is? Oh wait, wrong, wrong Skinner. <laughs> yeah, out the air, lucky go. Um, who is commander of the Daedalus? He is also the grandfather of the Winchester Boys in Supernatural, and in about a half dozen other things like, um, what's it called? Damn it, X Files. X Files. That's what I'm trying to think of. Um, you've got Joe Flanagan, aka Captain Shepard, or as Alex calls him, my friend Alex, the hair. She's hypnotized <laughs> by the hair. She wants yeah. to touch the hair. Like, just. You cannot go touch over the hair. There, you friggin' weirdo. <laughs> then we've got Timothy Omadzin. Wow, my brain just totally broke halfway through that name. What the hell? Omadzin. Um, who. I have no idea what he's uh, from. He- but he looks fancy. Uh, he play, uh, currently stars as King Richard in uh, Galavant, and he was also Kane on Supernatural. There we go. Um, and he was also in Psych as well. Nice. Then we've got Andrew Jack. Andrew Jack is one of the best uh, voice coaches in all of Hollywood. Devin Murray. He has... <laughs> oh no, he's worked... Oh, Devin- oh- Andrew's worked yeah, on Andrew heaps of stuff. Is... So it's just faster to not list it and just assume he's worked on everything. Um, Devin Murray. Harry Potter. Harry... Harry Potter. He's from Harry Potter. God damn it. I'll have to add him to Harry my Potter. list as well. Uh, <laughs> SpongeBob Hemp Pants. Um, Christian Kane. Who's he from again? Uh, he was he was on um librarians. That's right. Uh, then we've got Rambo's son Franks, who, the the legend himself. Um, can't wait to catch up with him again. Um, if you don't know who he is, you need to watch the Listener. It is he is spectacular in that. He's also Lieutenant Ford in Stargate Atlantis and in about a dozen other things, including Defiance. Um, Nikki, Acox. Yep. Yep. What's she from again? Uh, so she uh, is best known for her role as Minx in Jeepers Creepers 2, and she was also Meg in Supernatural. Ah! Knew I recognised her from somewhere. Um, then we have um, Robert Eglund. It's like Eglund, some... yep. Yep. And Freddy Krueger himself. Oh, yes. Um, then we have... Hal Ryle? Hal Ryle? Yep. Voice actor for over 40 years. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to get him to sign my Transformers stuff, aren't I? Uh, yeah. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> Why does my list he's keep getting Pi- bigger when I have less money? He, he's been, he was Miss Piggy and Gonzo. Okay, then. Um, then we have... Yeah, he's Miss Piggy. He's the voice of Miss Piggy. Then we have Ken... Because... Ken Kazinger? Yep, Kersinger. Kersinger. Jason! Jason! Jason Voorhees. So we have Freddy vs. Jason. Freddy Jason. Nice. Yep. Um, so yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, and last but not least, we have Carl Urban. I wonder how many questions about Thor Ragnarok he's going to get over the weekend. All of them. He's going to get all of the questions <laughs> about Thor Ragnarok. Um, 
And My the... first thought is actually the singer. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it'll be Ragnarok because they're filming at the moment. Oh, yeah. It'll be Ragnarok. Which you can't, which you can't say anything about. That won't stop people asking. No. That'll never stop people asking. Because everyone's always supposed to see if they'll accidentally say something. Pretty much. So, um, yeah, that pretty much covers all the big name guests. Uh, there's quite a few people from comics and stuff like that going as well. Um, if we get time, we may go and interview them as well. Yeah, that'd be nice. You got Marianne. Tristan Jones, or, Tristan Jones is one of the best comic authors, comic people you will ever meet. Yeah. Jason Palmer, Brad Walker, James. Bleh, nope. Um, Dark Oz? Okay. Yes, Dark Oz. Let's see. They're, they're, an in, they're an independent comic book um, publisher. Nice. And then we have a couple of cosplay, Miss Sinister cosplay, Major Sam cosplay, and Variable. But yeah, yeah there was a ton uh, of cool other... Cool thing, co- yep. thing with Major Sam, uh, she won uh, last year's uh, cosplay championship. Nice. The Australian one. Went over to Chicago, and then won the world finals at C2E2 in Chicago. Nice. Very nice. So, she will be very busy. Oh, yeah. Sounds like it. Um, so, yeah, so, that's it on the breakdown of Oz Comic Con. Um, so, let's move on to the model report really quickly. So, take your time, Eugene. It's the final one, so make it flashy. For today's model report, I'm going to give a little review of the Dragon 124th scale Iron Man 3 kit. Um, these are about, I guess, three to four inches tall. Have a retail of about fifteen dollars. There's four in the set. There's Iron Man Mark, uh, I guess it's 17. Uh, the Mark. 40 shotgun armor, the Mark 35 red snapper armor, and the Mark 16 nightclub armor. Uh, these are made out of a combination of plastic and vinyl. Um, they're, they're e- fairly easy to push together. They're all molded in gray, so you will need to paint them. Um, just a re- little reminder, though, that since we're talking vinyl kits, uh, do not use enamel paints on them. You'll need to use acrylic. Otherwise, uh, all sorts of bad things them. happen. Huh? Otherwise, all sorts yeah. of bad things happen. Yes, very much so. Um, but these are really nice little kits if you can find them at your local hobby shop. Um, I bought, bought a case of them, so I have have a number of sets available and if you come out to uh, the PenCon model show this Saturday in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, I'll have them with me. But they're worth taking a look at. They're in scale with your standard uh, car and truck model kits and they make for a nice diorama with them. And that is the Hobby Report from Perry County Hobbies. Nice. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you, Eugene. Um, oh, I do have one uh, piece of news. Yep. Uh, uh, tomorrow is the 17th anniversary of when the moon was blown out of Earth orbit. Oh, Kelly Dookley? What was that? Oakley Doakley? Question mark? How's the, how's the moon blown out of Earth orbit, Earth's orbit? September 13th, 1999. Uh-huh. I have to be a little bit more specific. <laughs> Space 1999. Oh, yes. If Scarecrow was here, he'd be, he'd be hurting us right now. Yes. Tomorrow is the 17th anniversary. Okay. 
Sweet. Well, uh, we'll never forget our long lost moon. Sorry, Goku didn't do it. <laughs> well, actually, in the series, Piccolo blew the moon up. Yeah, to stop Gohan from transforming. Yeah. Which is the second time the moon gets blown up. <laughs> he blows it up twice. He blows it up once in Dragon Ball and once in Buddy Dragon Ball Z. Stupid moon. Keeps coming back. How dare it. So. Alright, Stuart, let's move on to the news. Yep. Uh, so we all know that um that Ghost Rider's appearing of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., right? Yeah, with the yeah. trailer dropped. It looks fucking awesome. Uh, so, uh, Yahoo TV, uh, dropped a picture, and you actually get to see the actual, like, the Ghost Rider side of it. Like, not the human side, but, like, you actually get to see the CG effect and everything. <laughs> it looks good! Nice. It looks great, like, the car. So, so I'll, I'll give details. Um, the head's flaming, the outfit's the same. The car, the wheels are on fire. Yep, and there's and the fire coming out of the engine block. It is beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I... I cannot wait to see this. <laughs> this will make me watch S.H.I.E.L.D. again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Continuously watch the S.H.I.E.L.D. Because this is... <laughs> I love Ghost Rider, so... Oh, yeah. I do, I do like that they're taking a slightly different take on Ghost Rider. Um... They're not doing the Nicolas Cage character yet. Yeah. Where it's not a dude on a motorbike. It's a dude in a car. Anyway, that could be better as if it was a low rider. <laughs> Alright, so this is uh this is some interesting episode eight news. So so back back in July, um uh, Ryan Johnson had a rap production for episode eight. But apparently it appeared in the Onga hasn't filmed her scenes yet. As Maz Kanata. Huh. So that'll be so that's uh, where she is going to be in it. She's, Maz is going to be in episode 8, so I'll be trying to see how they're going to do when they do this. Or, and when they edit that in. Yeah. Why well, hasn't she done her scenes yet? Not sure. Her, her words are, I haven't worked with him, I've yet to shoot, that's in my future. That's all she says. Yeah. Also, there's a, I don't know if you saw this really cool leak or not. Hmm? A potential leak of a certain really awesome battle scene that might happen in episode 8, which I really hope to god it happens. Okay. Uh, so basically this, um, there's uh, a person, uh, um, was uh, touring an island. Again, this is all just speculation. Yeah. So this isn't anything, nothing's confirmed, but apparently, um, they saw, they were, because obviously they're filming an island stuff, but they saw Luke Skywalker versus the Knights of Ren. Nice. Now, here's, here's the reason why I want to see this. If at any stage during any of the trailers, they end with just a green lightsaber, the collective Star Wars universe will lose their shit. You lost your shit like... and blew your load a couple of times over just by hearing Darth Vader's voice. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. We, if we see that green lightsaber, that means that the green lightsaber and the Anakin lightsaber, the blue one, will be in the same movie at the same time, which has never been done before. It hasn't been happened yet. What would be really cool really? is if they reacted to each other. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm thinking. Also, even cooler, I'm thinking. Don't cross cooler. the stream style. Like it's. Yeah, don't, it's like, don't, cross oh, the oh, blades, no. don't cross the blades. Oh no, the the no, no, Kylo, Kylo Ren's knights. Wrap, are... No, no, no. I'm, I'm no, getting no, there. I'm the getting the there. Sword. Don't steal my joke, damn it! I'm trying to say, <laughs> Kylo Ren's lightsaber is too strong. We need to combine forces. They put them next to each other. They wrap around each other, and then they <laughs> have a rainbow lightsaber. Aha! Now my <laughs> lightsaber is twice as strong. <laughs> But, uh, the, the really cool Technically, thing would it would only is... be blue and green. And yeah. all the other colours that fine. come from it when it's combined together. It goes all rainbow colour. Just remember, um, Kylo Ren and the Knights of Ren killed all the Jedi. Yeah. All the students and stuff. Yeah. I want to 
to have killed I just want to see. I just want to see Luke unload and just just mur just go on a murder fest. Yeah, I don't think that'll happen. Because remember, Luke hasn't actually killed anyone on screen. That's not true. How many bounty hunters did he kill in episode 6? You mean, um, when they're escaping you from mean... the hover platform? Yeah, he did kill it. No, okay. like when he, when he's, when, no, no, like when he's on, Jabba, like on top of Jabba's barge and they're all just <laughs> coming out of the woodworks and he's just mowing them down. That's a fair point. I retract my statement. Thank you. Also, Luke hasn't killed anyone? Hello, he blew up the Death Star. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, uh, what I meant was, like... In cold blood, yeah. In cold blood. Mean. So. I just, I just want to, like, I just want to see that green light to come back and I'll be happy. Yeah. Plus, I'd like to see how strong 30... Yeah, he's actually gone in 30 years. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Ben got pretty strong after 30 years. I know. Yeah, I was. I remember. There's just there's one ability I remember from the 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 now Legends line that Luke got so strong that he could use green lightning, and it was called Emerald Lightning. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna be a thing. No, I so wish because that would be amazing. No, what would be awesome would be a um, AOE style light force lightning where he pounds the ground and the lightning comes out around somebody. And shocks them the feet up. Oh, like a shockwave. Yeah. yeah, that way they can't deflect it with a lightsaber. Ha uh ha! -huh. Take that, reality. <laughs> uh, keeping on um, keeping on sales for a bit. Um, have you guys heard of the blind wave cr blind wave crew? No. Um, so these guys are really cool. They've done a, they've done the um fan films and stuff in the past, and they also have a reaction channel on YouTube. But they just released their um their Kylo Ren fan film. And it's really, really good. It's called um, Kylo, Kylo Ren the Awakening. It goes for about seven minutes. But basically, it's, it, the premise of it is basically Kylo going to the moon of Endor and finding Vader's ashes. And huh. obviously finding a Jedi. Apparently, as a Jedi, they're guarding it. Why would they but like, the, choreography, the choreography is really well done. The costumes are really well done. Yeah, I have to look that up. Yeah, it's, re it's, like, it's a really cool cool um fan film so no. i thought i want to message uh mention that because i really enjoyed it all right let's uh let's move on to um Pun the netflix punisher um tv show because we've got a casting Ooh, nice who's playing punisher the same person who's, pu who's punisher in daredevil ah uh, that's boring you don't you didn't <laughs> like job bernthal no, no, I'm just, I'm just trying to rise you up. It's, it's, it's hilarious. It's, <laughs> that that moment yeah, where you're like, wait, what? Um, <laughs> yeah, apparently, um, uh, Ben Barnes is going to join the cast of Punisher, and he'll, uh, rumor has it he'll play uh, organized crime prodigy Bobby Saint. Okay. So basically, the main bad guy. Fair enough. Uh, so, uh, we all know Pokemon Sun and Moon are coming out, right? Yeah. Yep. So, we have a leak from the anime, because obviously we know the anime is going to continue, of what Ash is going to do, or as his uh, Japanese name is, uh, Satoshi. Yeah. But apparently in Sun and Moon, he's going back to school. Well, really? In the, Alola, in the Alola region, he's going back to school. He's going to school. But... Isn't he like thirty at this point? I don't know, but apparently, he's, he, apparently not, because he's getting a middle school degree. Oh, he is a fucking time lord. He really is. <laughs> it's the <laughs> only answer. Think about it. He, he never. He always stays as a ten-year-old. Yeah. So. Well, you've seen the meme online. Dragon Ball in the nineties. Dragon Ball now. Naruto in the nineties. Naruto now. Naruto now. Digimon in the nineties. Oh yeah. Digimon now. Pokemon in the 90s. Pokemon now. He actually looks younger. Now. 
that he did in the 90s. Which is impressive, because he looked about seven in the 90s. It's just like, really, guys? Really? I still find it funny that (sighs) they let 10-year-olds walk around. With monsters. With elemental monsters. They're pets, pretty much. Yeah, elemental monsters taking on organised crime. Yeah, the humans, the adults are useless. <laughs> so yeah, um, so yeah, this is interesting, and also apparently Professor Rogue's meant to be in the game. This is a really weird leak that came out, but like, because <laughs> um, we know how like the Kanto Pokemon have like alone alone forms. Yeah, still can't say that region properly. <laughs> apparently, forms. apparently to do to uh, do the in joke, uh. Professor Oak pops up in the game and he has a, and he has like his own alone form. So, oh, god damn. And, it, and it's like he's got a tan and it's like long hair and it's like got a Hawaiian shirt on and stuff. It's like well, so maybe this game is set before the Kanto game. And it all goes full circle. I'm not <laughs> sure. I I don't know a timeline where these appear and stuff. Yeah, I don't really think well, like, there is a timeline. Uh, considering it says middle school, I'm guessing he's actually somewhat aged somehow. Well, finally. Well, maybe each series is another generation of Ash. And at this point, we're at Ash 7. The great, 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 great grandson of the original Ash. Um, it'd be 13. Or 15. No. How's it 13 generations? What? No, no, she's thinking seasons. Oh, okay. I'm talking generations. She's yeah. talking seasons. We're talking seasons. different things, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and one really horrible thing to note about this. You know those really stupid Z moves? Yeah. Apparently Ash can do it, and his pose in the comic that was that was it, is him doing a Z move. And she's like, oh, God, I don't want to see that. No. I really, just I no. I really don't want to see Ash do that. Uh, to be perfectly honest, ever since they introduced Mega Evolutions, Pokemon's been on a downswing. So they're going to do Z moves, and the next generation is going to be Fusion, and it's going to be like, what fucking stupid gimmick are they going to add now? What they need to do for that? I think Pokemon actually dropped the ball with the 20th anniversary. The 20th anniversary shouldn't have been a new generation. It should have been Pokemon Worlds. It should have been a massive game taking place over all of the regions and it would take weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks to finish and have it so that you only have to own one game to be able to catch them all that would be nice <laughs> but that would lose our money so yeah but when you've got to catch about a thousand different things <laughs> and people want to buy, get each like yeah so a pair of each, so yeah. Anyway, Stuart, last piece of news, go. Yep. Uh, so we got a new, uh, new little uh, Rebels uh, TV promo. <gasps> hmm. And uh, apparently that green mist that possesses Kanan also possesses Darth Maul, which makes me think harder that it's Night um, Sister Magic. Looks like it's Night Sister Mag- Magic. No, 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 no. I, it's taken me all episode, but I finally blah, 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 broke my broke my words. Um, so yeah. that's it for episode one hundred. Thank you for listening to us. Um, we hope to get back to you guys as soon as we can with a not live, actually properly done podcast. Um, and we're not exactly sure when that's going to happen, but we'll try and get it let you know as soon as we can. Make sure you keep it on Facebook.com and Facebook.com slash uh, Facebook.com slash Save Sci-Fi and Facebook.com slash Save Sci-Fi Podcast um, for all the news to do with that. Um, keep it on Deadly's Fandom because we are doing a two pitches a week, one on a Monday, one on a Friday. Um, the most recent posted one was Star-Lord versus Boba Fett. So, anyway, that's that it. That was an interesting discussion. Thanks for 100 episodes. Catch you guys later. Bye. 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 So long, and thanks for all the fish. Do, 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 do. I was going to look up the actual words. Uh, 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 uh.